Hey everyone, welcome back to another bit. Where have you come from? What? I, I thought I was doing this video. No, Hayden, we talked about it. You stay behind the camera. Oh, well, the viewers never get to see me. Look, one video, but don't mess it up, all right? <laughs> oh, hi, didn't see you there. Welcome to another instalment of Top Dog Tutoring with your favorite host, Hayden. <laughs> Usual editor of the videos as well. Do it properly, Hayden. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the most genuinely hard spatial reasoning types of question. Let's dive in. So what exactly makes these questions so tricky? Well, there's lots of rules to consider and we're going to break down these questions, look at a couple of rules and then we'll combine all of them to look at the final product, the final questions. So here's my first rule on the screen now. It's called adding shapes. The whole purpose of this question type is to combine shapes. And one of the main things is adding two parts together. And as you can see, I've got a shape on the left here, which has a side marked X. I've then got a plus sign, which is giving me the indication to add the next shape, followed by another shape, which also has a side marked X. Now you may have already worked out what this is asking me to do. And it's asking me to add the two shapes together by joining the sides that are labeled X. Now you'll notice as well that this triangle isn't quite rotated in the same way as the side of the rectangle it needs to join to. So we're gonna to have to visualize a little bit what this triangle would look like if it was rotated so that the sides matched on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to draw this on and you should do that too. If you've got this in front of you in a test, you should be drawing the shape on. So I've drawn the triangle on the end here and what I'm going to do to finalize what this might look like is draw around the entire outside and I'm even going to shade in everything that is now part of my new shape after I've combined them. Now one final trick the answer we're looking for must look like this shape but it can also be rotated. Now at this point it may be help helpful to rotate your paper um, if you're really struggling to see which one. Now looking through the answers I can tell it's not A, it doesn't look anything like it. B looks like the most likely answer. I will very quickly scan the other answers to make sure I'm not falling into a trap and I can quickly see that C, D and E uh, look nothing like the shape we've created. So that's our first rule, adding shapes. On to the second rule, which is of course subtracting shapes. Now, just like adding shapes, we're still combining the two shapes together. However, instead of adding a part onto one end, we are going to cut away from the inside of the shape instead. So we are given this clue by the minus sign. And if that's not enough, the shape is also shaded in gray. So straight away, let's match these sides up. This side is labeled Y, this side is labeled Y, which means they need to uh, joined together and again I need to visualize this semicircle rotating slightly so that it does actually match up now very careful not to draw on the outside adding on I'm going to cut away from the inside now my drawing is not really accurate but it's enough to uh, spot what the the answer is going to look like so this time I'm not going to shade in my semicircle because I've cut it away from the shape it's not part of my shape anymore I am still going to go around the outline of what's left because this will really help me visualize what I'm looking for and I will shade in what's left as well so that I don't fall into the trap of including the part that I've just cut away. Okay now we know what we're looking for it could be rotated let's look through the answers. A does look similar but I think it's too long so I'm not going to include this as my answer. B doesn't look correct because it's not cut anything away. C has actually added it on so that's a really good trap there isn't it for people who've ignored the subtraction sign. D, again, looks like it's been added on, doesn't, doesn't quite look right. Ah, E looks exactly like the one we've, we've drawn and it hasn't even been rotated, so that's nice and helpful. E is my answer, it's time to move on. And as if that didn't make it all hard enough, here's another example question with an extra rule to bear in mind. So not only are we now adding something and subtracting something, we've also got these dotted lines down here and they look complicated, but it's not as hard as it looks. It simply means that when we're matching up this side here, which is labeled Y, we've got to put this smaller shape into that space because quite clearly the Y on my smaller triangle here is not as big as the, uh, the bottom side of this triangle. Okay, so it's just telling us where to put it. Right, I'm gonna whiz through this one and use our strategy and hopefully you can follow along and the drawing is going to come in very handy. So here we go, let's start with X. So here's my side X here and it must match this side X on the triangle. So clearly again, I'm gonna to have to rotate it and hopefully you can imagine it turning slightly in your mind as it 
connects like a puzzle piece. Let's draw what that would look like when it was added on, something like that. Okay, I've also got to, so I'm gonna tick this one off, I've also got to subtract my other triangle from this space here. Now this one doesn't have to rotate because the sides are both on the bottom. So I should be able to just draw this one in nice and easily like that. All right, looks pretty confusing right now. So final step, let's go and draw around what is left. So here is what's left, including the part we added on. And we're gonna shade all of that in as well to make it really clear. Okay, and that's the shape we're looking for. A quick glance at the answers, and I can see actually one of them is standing out because it's not been rotated, few, as if it's not hard enough already. D is the answer that we're looking for in this example. Right, guys, we've got everything we need to solve these types of questions. I'm gonna do one more example with you. I'm gonna go through quite quickly at a pace that you should be working at when you're confident, and then I've got one for you to try at home as well, so do stay tuned. Here we go, let's do this one nice and quickly. Okay, I've noticed I'm subtracting this shape first, and it's marked with an X. I can see that X is here, X is here, and also I'm gonna have to flip this shape, rotate it 180 degrees, and I'm gonna draw it in here because I'm cutting away from the shape. Okay, that first bit's done. Now, moving on to the second part. All right, let's match up the Y with this Y. Fortunately, as you can see from the lines being quite parallel there, I don't have to rotate this shape at all to add it on, which makes my life a little bit easier. So let's just draw in the rest of this shape as best as we can and use your eyes to make sure you're drawing as accurately as possible when you're, when you're doing this. Okay, right, I've added the piece and I've subtracted a piece from this side. Let's use our final part of the strategy and go around the remaining part of the shape as well as what we've drawn in. And like I said, as you can tell from my drawing, it doesn't matter about it being super accurate as long as you can see which parts shouldn't be included and which parts should. And I'm even going to shade in now everything that's left, including my extra part, but not including the part I cut away. Otherwise, I'll be adding it, not subtracting it. And there we are. That's the shape I'm left with. Can I find this anywhere in my answers? Now, quite clearly, it's not A. B, there's just simply not enough there for it to be the answer. C... Let's think, has it been rotated? Ah, I think C might be my answer, but do you know what? If I'm not 100% confident, I will quickly check the other ones first. Okay, D, quite clearly not the answer. And E, well, E has a, has a huge square jutting out here, and I don't think my shape has quite that size square. So no, I don't think E is the best answer. I think I'm going to stick with my gut and go with C. C has been rotated 90 degrees, and it is our answer. There you have it. Wow, the hardest question type there is, and you have made it this far, so well done. If you do find it a little bit tricky, go back through the video and look at some of the key tips again. Right, look at the screen. You've got one more to have a go at. You're subtracting twice this time. Yes, you don't have it in front of you, but you can copy it out and have a go. Let me know what you think the answer is in the comments section down below. So there we have it, a strategy to tackle one of the hardest reasoning questions available. If you found this video helpful, do give us a like and make sure to subscribe. We've got plenty more awesome content on the way and you never know, if I'm lucky, I might get the chair again. See you next time.